And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're taking a look at a kid's game called Life in the Coral Reef. Now, as we all know, the reefs are an amazing thing to see all the variety of life. If you ever get a chance to go up close to a coral reef, they're just totally worth it. So many neat things to see. I really like this sort of thing uh, in real life. I like the idea of this game. This is kind of a Where's Waldo style game where you're going to be looking for different things in the coral reef faster than everybody else in an ever-changing landscape. Let me show you. So first you're going to put the board together here with a bunch of puzzle pieces. The, the puzzle pieces actually have two different sides to them. You can see that one side, this side here, is a much less busy side, so it's a little bit easier to see stuff. This side has a lot more seaweed on it. You'll also notice that the puzzle pieces do not fit together at all. It's going to drive you nuts. My OCD four-year-old just kept complaining that I, daddy was not putting together the puzzle right, but that is the way it goes together. You have a deck of cards here, and one player is going to flip over two of them. So what do we got here? We have a shark and a vase. And everyone's going to be looking for these at the same time. As soon as you find both of them, you're going to touch them with both your fingers. You can't just touch one. So for example, I've already found the vase that's there, but I haven't found the shark yet, so I can't touch them. But once I find both, I put my index fingers on both of them. The first person to do that correctly can take one of these wildlife. These are like little rubbery animals here that you can take. Now you'll also notice that on the cards, there are treasure chests. If, and this doesn't happen very often, but if both of them have a treasure chest on it and you're the person who gets it correctly, then you get a treasure chest token. Now, the first person to get two treasure chest tokens or four of these animals, I'm sorry, five of these marine animals is the winner of the game. And you'll be putting them on top of your own thing here. This is where you keep the stuff that you've won. Now you can play a variant, I recommend it, that if you're the person who gets them right, then the next turn you're the person who turns over the cards, but you can't go. And that way you keep one person from dominating the game. And that's how you play. So the pieces are double-sided, like I said. This is the other side of the puzzle. And as you can see, it's still hard to find things quickly, but it's a lot easier than the seaweed side. And because you can mix these puzzle pieces up any way you want, rotating them, you know, they work in all directions, you really can get a huge variety of different combinations of where to find stuff. And there really is quite a few cards in this game. That all the different pictures are fairly distinctive and yet somewhat similar. You know, like here's there's a shark in this game, but that's not the there's two different sharks. Now it's pretty obvious which one is which, but that still adds a little bit of a hmm to the game. The tokens that come with the game are fine good quality and these are really fun you know they're just a little rubbery little uh, you know you can buy like a pack of these somewhere like at an educational store or whatever and they're just used as tokens here but they work really well this here this plastic thing and you know, this is one thing I'm not a huge fan of the game you have to keep this stupid plastic thing with the lid on it otherwise you have the box with a hole I'm not a big fan of boxes with holes and but that's really my only complaint other than that component quality is quite good This is an excellent little children's game, or even older kids can play it, but I like this one with the younger ones. It says four plus on here, and that's about right, where they're looking for various things in the ocean. You know, find them. It's kind of like a Where's Waldo, but I like this because, you know, once you play Where's Waldo, you know that Waldo's hiding behind a wash machine in the bottom four of the department store or whatever. In this game, it could change because the puzzle pieces switch around. Now, this is a game where one person might be faster than other people, but you might be surprised, like, oh, I found that right away. Where's that other one? And someone else might have found both more quickly. I found that this kind of balanced out. And if you play with the variant, which, again, should have been the official rule, where the person who finds both is the person who plays the cards the next time so that they're not able to go out and so that the same person doesn't win all the time. It's fun for parents to play with their kids. You might be surprised. The kids might whoop up on you. So it's 
colorful. It has two different sides with hundreds and hundreds of combinations, the way the different things can go together. A cool theme, fun scoring tokens. I mean, these tokens didn't need to be in the game. They're little toys, essentially, but it's a good use for them. And so I like it. You know, the speed games, kids tend to like those kind of games anyway. Can you be the first one to spot something? But here, the spot it type stuff changes every game and gives you a good, decent variety. So I like this one for kids. Definitely approved from me. Life in the Coral Reef. Dice Tower Judgment approved.